Hello, I am Brandy Cagino of SpoonAndSaucer.com where good food is easier than you think and hey, welcome back to my kitchen. This week I am talking about homemade food gifts that you can make in your very own kitchen. That's right, that's right. You can make them. Now, some of these are going to have recipes. I will have a link to those in the show notes, so be sure and check those out. There are eight, eight, however you want to count it, eight homemade food items. And you guys, these are really pretty easy, and I've shown you some of them already here on the Spoon and Saucer channel. So I want to be sure and show you some of them. Maybe you thought, hmm, I'd like to make something homemade for a gift to give, but what shall I make? I do not know. Well, allow me to enlighten you. I've got some stuff here that you might like. First of all, I've got this, how, okay, first of all, how cute is the jar? First of all, but inside here, I've got some honey simple syrup. This is really easy to make. Now you may have heard of regular simple syrup, which is made with sugar and water. This bad boy is made with honey and water. So it accomplishes the same thing, but it has a different sort of flavor to it depending on the honey that you use. So honey simple syrup, gift number one, honey simple syrup. The second thing is you could make homemade jam. Now this happens to be kind of a cross between a syrup and a jam that I made. It's called strawberry syrup. And um, this is fantastic to put into drinks or over ice cream or whatever. You could put it in iced tea if you wanted to. But jams are great. People usually really like them because they can use them on peanut butter and jelly or they can use them at a party, put them out at a party or, I don't know, just eat them. Jam's really simple. Now, if you're kind of freaked out by the whole canning thing, don't worry, because when you pick up your pectin to make your jam with, you can actually make freezer jam, which is really simple. You just stir fruit and sir, or fruit and sugar and then freeze it. How easy is that? You could do that. So jam is number two. Number three is to make your own coffee. Now this might sound somewhat ridiculous. It's not. Mm -mm. You can make this outside. Now I have an outdoor barbecue that I have happened to have a gas burner on because the thing about roasting coffee in your own home is it gets kind of stinky. Now that's kind of in a good way. It's that nice roasty coffee smell. But if you're not particularly fond of that, you can go outdoors and do it on your barbecue. So these, um, and I'm showing you these because I got these from my local place called Mr. Green Beans and you can buy them online, green coffee beans, and they're about half the price, a pound of these is about half the price of a pound of roasted beans at your local roaster. Now I live uh, just outside Portlandia in Oregon, um, I live across the river, and uh, we really like our coffee here. You haven't heard so uh, Miss Green Beans is here locally and you can try to roast that now if you're not feeling that adventurous you don't want to roast it totally fine just buy some roast roasted coffee beans just go pick them up at your local store everybody loves coffee you can get them roasted or give them whole if your person has their own uh, grinding of the beans mechanism okay so that's number three number four is Boom, homemade vanilla. Now this is my big giant jar of homemade vanilla. And I've got, see the, you can see the tops of the vanilla beans in there. So this has been with me for, oh, probably a year. I usually make an, a new one every year. So if you don't want to give a giant one of those away, you could take this and break it up into little tiny bottles like this. And this is a little chalkboard label that I've written vanilla on and this is actually from my cabinet. Now one thing I do like to do when I give these is I will take <clears throat> a vanilla bean and actually sh like fold it in half and put it in there. Um, then what I tell people is if you take that vanilla bean and you snip off the end and then you sort of like squeeze the seeds into the bottle then it makes this really glorious nice situation with the vanilla. And it's really easy to make. And again, I've got a recipe for that on spoonandsaucer.com. So check the notes. 
That's number four. Number five is something I just recently showed you how to make. Remember homemade uh, granola? Super easy. So this is about what it makes. It makes about half a gallon mason jar, that entire recipe. Um, there might be a little extra depending on how you measure if you're generous or not. But you could give this whole thing away or you could break it into little cellophane bags with the ribbon on the top. But this is an easy gift. Really, really, really simple. So that's number five. Yes. Okay. Here's one I thought would be really fun. So I tend to save these little berry baskets over the summer. And so I thought, wouldn't it be fun to make a little kit that people could make s'mores out of over the winter and you just broil your uh, marshmallow in your oven? It's really simple. On top of the cracker and then broil, or bro broil your marshmallow for about 90 seconds. So in here, I've put, there's this, this is, um, S'mores enough for four. There's four marshmallows and then I've got enough uh, graham crackers in there to make four and then there's about, if they're nice to each other, there's about four segments of chocolate and this is a local um, chocolate maker that I really like, a local salt. This is a salted chocolate which I thought would be really fun. So that is number six, s'mores kit. Yeah, that would be fun, right? Everybody likes to be a kid. Number seven is pickles. Now these are some bun breader, bud, bread and butter pickles that I made and they've got some peppers in here and onions and cucumbers and these were really, really tasty. This is actually our last jar. I made them last year and uh, they're really good, but you can make any pickles that you like. You could even make fresh pickles. Again, if you're kind of weirded out by the canning thing, don't worry because you can just make fresh pickles and put them in the refrigerator and then give them away that way. So that's number seven. And the last one I'm gonna show you is to make home baked goods. Now this is a cinnamon roll. I made these over the weekend. And uh, this is the last one. And if you're following me on Instagram, I sort of um, fessed up that I made a lot of these and I ate some. So, um, these are cinnamon rolls, and again, I have the little berry basket. I thought it was kind of cute. You could wrap this um, in cellophane this way with a little ribbon on top. I think that would be super cute. Or you do like a loaf of pumpkin bread or like the pumpkin bread I have on spoonandsaucer.com um, or something similar to that that you could kind of box up and make. Cookies the same way. Baked goods, you know, stack one type of cookies on top of each other in a little cellophane bag with a ribbon. Frankly, it's all about packaging, right? I mean, how cute is that? How happy would you be to get that for Christmas? So those are the eight things I would make, if I were you, for homemade food gifts this season. That's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to visit me any old time, any time of the year on spoonandsaucer.com. Thank you so much. Be sure to give this video a like a share, and be sure to subscribe. And I will see you next time. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye.